YouTube, Electric Adventures here with um, slightly behind the camera sideways mode. I still don't have a tripod, so I've got the camera sitting up on a chair. Um, and the reason why we're in this mode is why I have a new retro computer. And it's another MSX machine, so I'll open the box. So, no, it's not a HP laser jet. Lots of bubble wrap views, which is always nice to see. Uh, the first thing we get out is the keyboard. It's actually a very nice keyboard. It looks in pretty good nick. It's obviously a bit dirty and dusty. We'll have to tidy that up. And you can see that it is a Pioneer MSX. Um, and um, they did things a little differently. Notice these special keys over here talking about superimpose video and computer. Um, so it's an interesting curiosity in the MSX1 era. Now I also I actually used to have one of these as well but when I did a clean out at some stage I don't know why uh, I think it might have stopped working, but I threw it out. So there's the front of the system. So we have a cartridge port. We actually have um, mixing level and a volume as well. And uh, we'll cover that mixing stuff in more detail. The controller ports are on the front, which is actually really handy. That's where the keyboard goes. Um, the video and audio, so you've got a pass-through thing as well and the powers on the front as well. So actually a really nice looking unit. And around the back it's actually got quite a few ports. It's a little dusty and it's actually reasonably heavy. So uh, being built like a bit of st um, stereo equipment. So on the back we have another expansion port which actually does have its cover which is nice. Um, we have our in and out audio so because it's actually got pass through we've got in and out for video as well once again for caster and it has balan connectors for those and we've actually got the balan adapters which is really good it has RF out and a channel selector and it's got an RGB out not 100% sure of the pin outs but um, and then we have system control which will come into thing with the second package um, an MSX data port and an MSX parallel port which is like a reduced parallel port. I've got several of these cables. It's actually a really nice MSX unit. Um, now same specs as other MSX machines except for one thing it only has 32k of RAM. This is particularly important because this is why I actually got into making 32k RAM cartridges back in the day because this was another one of the machines that was sold um, around my area and um, a lot of the tape games, which was the main software people could get, require more than 32K. So um, I think Manic Miner will fit in a 32K, but some of the other larger games uh, don't. So a really cool addition to the MSX collection. We're going to set up and play with it, and I'll explain more about the video mixing bit, which is the um, part of this computer um, that sets it, you know, makes it a little bit different from other original MSX computers because um, Pioneer were into another particular technology called LaserDisc. Alright, well I'll move this stuff out of the way and we'll move to the next box. Right, back again and we're ready for our second box. And no, it's not a Hondo mind monitor, but it's a box that's been cut down. Uh, so, this is another piece of Philips technology.
Now, sorry about that. I might, we might go off the tripod now. So what we have here is a Pioneer um, laser disc player, and this is a much later uh, version. My current um, laser disc player is a Yamaha one, which is a really good quality one. Um, but this Pioneer one, um, as long as it works, we don't know yet, um, has a lot of extra features, including karaoke, uh, the ability to play both sides of the disc itself without you having to manually flip it over, which is great for some of the um, uh, longer movies. Um, and all of this functionality here, I believe, is to do with the karaoke the mic and um, things like that. So we've got you know, power on, there's a sensor. Now, I don't have a remote control for this, so um, I should be able to get that. These are uh, microphones, control mic, touch karaoke, vocal partner. So all this karaoke stuff. Um, and, um, you know, this is the LCD display for the the player. Um, I'll take it these are chapter buttons or something, I'm not sure. And obviously side A, side B, play stop, that's the laser dysfunctions there. Um, it also has um, a lot newer sound processing than my current um, laser display. My Yamaha one um, is actually capable of having um, digital um, uh, digital audio out, uh, but I never got the modification made to it. So uh, in the end, this will probably won't sit in the um, in the games room, uh, but we'll see how things go. All right, we'll move around to the back. Um, okay, so around the back we have um, got an auxiliary audio uh, feature. I'm not sure about that one. Um, we've got audio out, left and right, one and two, an attenuator, a video out as well, and we have the control ports in and out, which is the most important thing for the computer we're talking about, because with the computer control and feeding the output from this through the computer, we should be able to use the overlay functions. Now, I do need to work out a, um, a control cable. Um, so I'm probably not going to be able to demonstrate it in this video. Uh, the only other thing is, is that they haven't put the transit screw back in. Um, and I don't know the working state of this video player in the first place. But anyway, let's get it set up and wired up to a few things. And we'll just wait and um, see how we go. Okay, I've um, had to set this up a little bit convoluted. Um, and I'm going to demonstrate the laser disc part first. Because um, silly me, the LaserDisc can play both NTSC and Power Disc, um, and of course the Pioneer uh, MSX I have is a power unit, but I actually don't have any Power LaserDisc to actually play to do this demonstration. So at the moment, the um, I've had to set my um, digitizer to take the um, composite signal from uh, both of these devices and feed it into a um, LCD monitor. Uh, and set it to NTSC, otherwise I couldn't get a stable picture on uh, my capture device and the Commodore monitor. So anyway, when we boot up this MSX machine, it has a little bit different. You can either select normal MSX Basic, which is option 2, or MSX Basic plus P Basic, which is um, Pioneer's extensions to MSX Basic to allow video control and overlay. Now if I select uh, that and you get um, the number of bytes free is slightly different and if I press play on the laser displayer at the moment nothing will happen but if I press the um, the video pass through so I've got the laser displayer plugged into the input ports in the back of the computer um, and then the output of the computer is going to the monitor so you can see we have a um, little bit of a FBR warning from the disk, and then the disk will load. No sound as yet on this part of the titles, but it's in colour and it's in NTSC mode. So. If I want to demonstrate the overlay capabilities of this machine, I really need to, I'm going to have to feed it in another source other than the laser displayer. 
But as you can see, we work. And the laser disc that I chose for this particular demonstration is one of my manga ones, and it's a title called Soul Bianca. Just let you see the very, very intro bit of that. Just seeing how that's coming out on the camera. Yeah, there we go. Get to see a bit more of the detail. So the um, laser displayer works perfectly. It flips between sides really well. Obviously don't have a remote. Haven't tried any, out any of the karaoke feature. So now what we'll do, I'll go back and set the computer up so we're doing proper capture in power mode and I'll feed in another source so we can have a play of it. Okay, uh, so this is the computer booted up. Um, I've selected the P-Basic mode. Um, and all I've done is I've fed in the signal from my Sega SC3000. I haven't connected the sound because, I mean, I've got wiring all over the place at the moment and I'm getting lots of interference on the sound. So we'll just go with video. So if I just simply press the video button on the keyboard, we switch over to the source coming in on that port, which is running load um, championship load runner. I press computer to go back to computer and here's where it gets interesting I press superimpose and we can see we have basic running over the superimposed over the top of this signal coming in um, and I can press computer to go back to our normal screen um, now we can um, type in a bit of a now the, uh, the basic includes commands to remote control the attached device, which is designed to be a laser disc. Now, we're not going to be able to do that because I don't have a power source and I don't have, I'm going to have to try and make a control cable. Once I um, 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 basically find the, uh, the wiring out for it. Now, I'm just having a bit of a look at maybe a. Um, what do I think now? There's a command called blind. Okay, so let's try this call blind. Um, zero means um, basically wipe down from the top. And what's the value mean there? Um, Uh, where is this? Okay, we'll just try S and see what it says. Whoops. Okay. I reckon we'll worry about this space. Let's see how we go. No, I obviously made a mistake there somehow. Okay, well, the example shows it a little differently. function call, that's what I would have thought. So the, isn't it lovely when the listings in um, things are incorrect? We'll just type in a bit of this listing. So slip green two. Um, I might as well type this listing as is. So this is going to do a for loop in steps, so 0 to 255 in steps of 16. Um, and we're going to draw a line from x at and 0 to x plus 15 to 191. It's quite a nice keyboard, really. and BF, which means background fill. So that's a standard MSX command, that one. Shows you how good the line drawing stuff was. Now, I'll just stop there and we'll run that. And full screen editing. Why didn't somebody in the audience tell me about that one? Dear me. That's what we need, interactivity. So you run that and we get color blinds, which is quite nice, shows the colors. So now, um, We'll list and show you what we're up to, and then we'll put in no, that's the one I complained about before. Oh. Some of the keys are a little dirty by the looks of it. OK, 
Okay, it actually did something and it didn't complain. Yeah, we're definitely having some keys. We've got another for loop. So this is going to go through a different effects. Okay, I need to tap the um, F key a little harder for just for the time being to give a chance to. Um, not all spaces are necessary in MSX Basic, but it is a lot easier for you guys out there to read what in the world I'm doing if I put spaces in. Do have this on a stool that's rocking a little bit too which doesn't help and uh, all right let's see how we go with this one now so these are the different blind effects so that's quite impressive being able to do that from a basic program Actually, some of those blind effects are quite good, aren't they? It's actually quite a few. So, you know, this is the beginning of the uh, video titling um, sort of stuff, because this is the MSX1 era, so 1983. So this is pretty advanced stuff for back then. I just want to see whether we can get the um, superimposing happening, so we can actually see the um I'll stop that down. Um so we can call and, and turn on the so at fifteen we've got a call external TV and one. Ah. C key. No, didn't like that. I oh, might want brackets around it. So the first time I'm using this for a very long time and I never really got into the realised about the titling functions when I had one of these before. So as the other thing, these set of instruction manuals didn't come with the device I got in this package. These are my one from my original one. Yeah, no, still not good. Just trying to figure out what I'm doing wrong here. We'll replace 15. with impose, call impose, right and that'll do that, so we'll just see, we'll put that there, that should put run, there we go, so we've got our superimpose signal in the background, and all the other effects are happening over the top. So you could have a feed-in video and then you could use the um, MSX machine to do your video titling. Um, it's very... Uh, and there's screen copy commands, uh, load, pan, uh, it's music. So you've got a music control, there's obviously remote functions. Um, I just want to see, I think there were some text functions as well. Okay, so we'll stop that. Oops. So I'm going to have to clean a few things. We'll go back to pure computer mode. Um, and what we'll do is 
we'll put in line 16 and we'll put in call symbol and we'll put it um, 5 comma 5 and then it puts a particular graphics character so we'll put a large A um, and we'll just um, Okay, we'll just try that as is for the moment. And what we'll do is put in a line 19, so we'll skip the colouring of the screen. And we'll go to the 50. So just to clear things up, this is where our program stands now. So it's going to skip the drawing of the colour part at the moment. And now, oh yeah, there's a flashing A up in the... Um, top left hand corner there for a little while go back to computer now let's make it a look sorry this keyboard let's make it a bit more interesting let's make it four by four in size there we go we have a large a and uh, we've still got the blind stuff going through erasing and drawing the overlay so you could build up uh, text and it even allows uh, you to rotate the text as well um, go back so we can and this is all pretty cool stuff to play with let's make that a lot bigger eight and color and one uh, I'm going to have to make sure that I haven't gone over a line there see that because that's wrapped around it's become part of that line at the moment Okay, run. So there we go, we have a green A rotated on its side. So with this computer you could record this output and you could do video titling quite easily in, in 1983. So it's um, you know, quite advanced little machine for its age. Um, and a very nice looking one. It looks like a piece of stereo equipment. It's exactly the same size as a standard piece of stereo equipment which is, you know, it's wider than the Philips machine, which is the go, go to the smaller size of stuff. Um, so it wouldn't look astray amongst other video equipment. So I hope you've enjoyed this little bit more technical demonstration um, and video, but uh, I think the, you know, each computer deserves a bit more detail. Now just to give you, so the manuals it came with, I was using then the PBASIC reference manual, which was showing those extra methods you get a nice thick instruction manual that tells you all about the computer and then a complete uh, MSX basic manual as well and these were all my original manuals that I had for my original one uh, but I never used the super and post that's amazing the stuff that um, you know went by and you didn't notice back in the day so I'll be having lots of fun um, having a bit of a play of this and seeing what else I can do with it um, Maybe I might be able to make uh, a new intro or something like that using this very computer. Alright, I hope you've enjoyed uh, this new addition to my retro computer collection. Uh, thanks to all my subscribers and viewers, and I'll catch you all later.